Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. In this video, we're gonna explore what I think may be five ways that President Nelson is pointing to the April 2024 General Conference. And uh, we've already discussed these over the course of many different videos, but I've never compiled it all together like this. Uh, in fact, I was gonna do this video, but then I realized as I was preparing it that I should make a spreadsheet because we need to visualize it. Or at least it helps some of us to be able to visualize it. So um, this new spreadsheet is called Profits, President Nelson's Warnings. Uh, that's what I'm currently calling it anyway. Uh, I can't definitively say that these are warnings for April 2024, but until I think of a, a better name, I'm going to leave it at that. And uh, this isn't meant to say that he is saying that something is happening in 2024. These are just observations of mine which seem to point toward April 2024. And I'll show you what I mean. So we'll do an overview. Um, and then after that, we're going to look at some of uh, the statements that have been made about the timing of the second coming, because there's always people that want to argue that we can't know when the second coming is going to happen. We can't have any idea. Um, you know, President Nelson can't know, on and on and on. Uh, we're going to cover those quotes that go against that idea. And then we're going to go through um, in a detailed fashion and go through each one of these items. So before we get into all that, uh, here's the Flood the Earth Challenge. Uh, sorry, I still haven't updated it. It's been four days, but we're at uh, 8,164 copies of the Book of Mormon that have been shared so far. We're trying to get to 10,000. So please help make that happen. Remember, the channel goal is to try to share at least 10 copies of the Book of Mormon, each of us individually. But not to stop there, to do as many as you possibly can. Uh, but try to at least get to 10 if you can, if you've participated. And if you haven't joined yet, please consider doing so. Remember, we're not just tracking random baptisms or people meeting with the missionaries. This is a motivator tool. So I'm tracking if you consciously wanted to participate in this challenge and this challenge caused you to share the Book of Mormon and then somebody met with the missionaries and then they got baptized. That's what we're tracking. So by participating, it does help other people want to do the same thing. And so um, just share a copy of the Book of Mormon. Let me know in the comments below or send me an email uh, and then make sure to include this word, hashtag flood in the comment or the email, and then I'll update you on the spreadsheet. So good job, everybody. Let's keep it up. Okay. So let's do the overview of this spreadsheet. So, okay. I have a few more things here other than just the, the five ways that I think he's pointing us toward uh, April, 2024. Um, so let's start at the beginning. So you can see this is a timeline at the very bottom. Um, I think the way it kind of starts, here, let me zoom in just a little bit more. I feel like the way that this starts is actually kind of with uh, Elder Bednar during the 2015 Christmas devotional because he had um, the the congregation or th those watching the devotional go through this mental exercise, imagining uh, being there at the time of Samuel the Lamanite and you being 10 years old and then five years go by and then Christ comes. You know, the sign is given that he was born into the world. So uh, a lot of people have felt that that was significant that he said that, that he wasn't just doing a retelling of the story and doing a fun Christmas thing, but rather he was maybe having you think about that and apply it to us now in the latter days, how something similar may happen to us that involves five years. And so what happened was, you know, he did that. He gave that talk in that devotional, and five years later, we had the April 2020 General Conference in which we did a Hosanna shout, the new church symbol was revealed, um, there's a new proclamation, a worldwide, a worldwide uh, proclamation, or proclamation to the world, sorry. Um, President Nelson said something peculiar at the beginning of that conference where he said that Jesus Christ and Heavenly Father would be with us during those two days, which uh, I've searched, and nothing like that has been said in any other general conference. I think a lot of people maybe assumed, oh yeah, they're going to be here with us. They're always here with us. They're here with us in spirit or whenever we're gathered together. But 
It felt like it may have been a little bit more literal than just that. But whatever the case, five years after Elder Bednar said that in the devotional, after he gave that talk, April 2020 rolled around. It may be that he realized back then, uh, maybe they all realized how significant the April 2020 general conference would be. And so he was uh, maybe dropping a hint to some to, to those of us that were listening. But whatever the case, this is what happened. Five years later, April 2020 General Conference. Now, uh, the year before 2020, um, in the April 2019 General Conference, that's when President Nelson gave his uh, talk called Come Follow Me. In fact, I should probably put that here. Come Follow Me. In which he said, time is running out. And then he uh, read DNC 132 verse 7 that talks about how your uh, ceilings are not in force if okay first of all in order for you to be sealed to your family uh you or okay in order to remain with your family in the eternities you have to be sealed and you have to be worthy okay so he read that scripture he also mentioned the Concepcion Chile temple which was the first temple that he dedicated as president of the church that'll come into play later But this was basically a big warning in my eyes because I think a lot of people are going to lose their families at the time of the second coming when you're judged to be telestial and that's why you're removed from the earth. And then you go to the spirit world and uh, you lose out on your family. So it's like a big warning. There's consequences for how we live and especially as we come up uh, to the second coming. So anyway, uh, he showed Paradise, California. So I have a picture of that right here. It was burnt down. It was like a, a visual aid uh, to make us think, I think, I think about the second coming. And so applying that same concept of a five-year warning, uh, similar to the Book of Mormon, and I'm not saying that that is going to happen, but it could. We're supposed to liken the Book of Mormon to ourselves, and uh, things may play out very similarly to how they did in the Book of Mormon. So sure, why not? Maybe there is a five-year warning. And so uh, if there ever was one, I would think that time is running out would be that warning. And I've searched. I've used all the different resources available to me. I have not found any other general conference talk in which a prophet says that time is running out or anything really similar to that or as explicit, clear as that. Time is running out. Okay, so five years later, what happens five years later? Well, we're not there yet. Five years later is April 2024 General Conference. So this is one way, and uh, the first way I think that he's pointing to 2024, potentially, if we're following this pattern of Samuel the Lamanite. Okay, the next thing, uh, October 2022 General Conference, in his very last talk, called Focus on the Temple, he showed... Um, a clip from the Book of Mormon video series, the part where Christ comes to the Americas. So a very good um, visual aid to maybe get that in our minds that, hey, the Nephites experienced this, and maybe we're going to be experiencing that ourselves pretty soon. So he showed that to us. Um, Okay, and then after that, we have what I think is the second thing that points toward the April 2024 General Conference. April 2023 General Conference, uh, where there, there was this big deal made about Palm Sunday. And we're about to look into that in, in more uh, in depth, but Palm Sunday was essentially when Christ came into Jerusalem and was recognized as king. Uh, it seems that that's actually a foreshadowing of the second coming. So if we look at it in that way, Um, It makes that conference all the more significant, that there was so much emphasis on Palm Sunday and Easter and so forth, okay? I'd never really thought about Palm Sunday until that general conference because I always thought that was just like a tradition of other Christian churches, you know, uh, their their Holy Week and the way that they do things. But no, now uh, we're focusing on Palm Sunday. So that caught my attention. I think it did with a lot of other people. And it should for all of us, I think, because of the implications of the second coming in that story. Also, remember, that's the imagery that they chose, like the official imagery that they chose for that conference. You can see it here in column D. But if we go to the church website, they did this interesting thing where for April 2023, it was Palm Sunday, right? Christ coming as king uh, during his mortal ministry. And then the very next general conference, October 2023, before the April 2024, 
you have Christ coming as king at the second coming. And I don't think that that's coincidence. I don't think it's arbitrary or anything like that. You look at all previous years and they, they don't do anything that's similar to this. So that's another thing to think about. Okay, next, April 2023 General Conference. So it's the same General Conference, you know, the Palm Sunday General Conference. Uh, he get He again... So two conferences in a row, October 2022, right here. You see the blue right here to connect these two. So again, for two conferences in a row, he brings up uh, Christ visiting with the Nephites. Only this time he asks us to read it ourselves in the Book of Mormon. Okay, so first he shows it to us and then he asks us to read it. It's two conferences in a row. And you have to, you have to maybe ask yourself why. Why read that? Well, I'm sure there's plenty of different theories, but I think the most common sense uh, theory about that is because we're going to be experiencing that. He's really focused on the second coming, and maybe we should learn some les lessons from what he said when he came to the Nephites, what he expected to see, and and also for us to think about what happened in the lead up to him coming to the, the Nephites. Okay, so anyway, let's move on. Uh, and then... <coughs> excuse me, October 2023 General Conference. Uh, that's where he gives his talk. That's where he gives his talk, Think Celestial. And uh, once again, uh, just like the Come Follow Me talk, he reads D&C 132 verse 7 that talks about all contracts and bonds and associations are of no effect unless you're sealed and you're worthy of that sealing. So another warning. And then in that temple, he announces the Vinya del Mar Chile temple. So here we have two Chilean temples. And with this one in particular, Vinya del Mar, that city burned four year or four months after he said this. So Paradise, California burns. Lahaina, Hawaii, which I haven't mentioned in this video yet, burns just a couple months before this conference that we're talking about, October 2023 General Conference. And then four months after... Uh, he this conference where he does the Think Celestial, announces the Vineyard del Mar Temple. It burns, <clears throat> the city burns, which means vineyard of the sea, so vineyard burning, and it's in a region called Valparaiso, Valley of Paradise. So we have all these paradise places that are burning. Now, I think that this points to the, the April 2024 General Conference because uh, it's just six months or the conference right before the um, April 2024 General Conference. You see that? It's the, it's the one right before it. These two talks, Think Celestial and Come Follow Me, seem to be... Uh, the, the whole concept of like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, I think that these two talks are two whoa, whoa, whoa uh, talks. They're very serious. They're, they're a warning. And they have to do with fire and places burning down and families being split up. So anyway, uh, he decides to basically do a similar talk, a companion talk, a parallel talk, uh, the conference before the April 2024 General Conference. Okay, so <clears throat> what do we have so far? We have um, one, so come follow me talk, time is running out. Uh, two, the Palm Sunday General Conference. It's a year before the April 2024 General Conference. So two, I'm talking about specifically things that are pointing to 2024. You could say that these ones kind of do, but maybe not specifically. The, you know, showing Christ coming to the Americas. I think it, it's, it, taught, it, it like indicates the second coming is close, but it doesn't specifically uh, point to 2024 per se. But these ones, I feel like they do more because five years, one year. Then we have the Think Celestial talk, just one conference before the April 2024 General Conference. So that's three. Now the fourth one is the 2023 Christmas devotional. This devotional broke tradition from previous uh, Christmas devotionals in a couple different ways. So for one, you'll notice the closing hymn. So this is my spreadsheet for Christmas devotionals going back to 2009. You'll notice that it's always been tradition to sing Silent Night as the closing hymn. 
Well, 2018, President Nelson's first year as president of the church, uh, instead of Silent Night, we sing the Hallelujah Chorus from Handel's Messiah. And if you're familiar with uh, that piece of work, uh, each part of it is associated with specific scriptures from the Bible. And the Hallelujah Chorus comes from Revelation uh, chapter 19, where it says, you know, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. And it has to do with the marriage feast, about the second coming, Christ and the marriage feast. Also, um, the first hymn that was sung was Joy to the World, which is sung as a Christmas hymn or a Christmas carol, but it was originally written um, about the second coming. It's a second coming hymn. So very interesting how President Nelson becomes president of the church and all of a sudden that happens. Well, it kind of happens again in 2020. Again, we start out by singing Joy to the World, and then the Hallelujah Chorus is included. Notice how in the years previous, you did not see the Hallelujah Chorus, but now you do. So 2020, big year, joy to the world, hallelujah chorus. Okay. And then a couple of years go by, things are normal. And then 2023, it's a repeat of 2018, joy to the world, hallelujah chorus. Um, so these are the only two times that I know of where you've had this uh, disruption in tradition. And I actually got an email from Shane Driggs. He put together his own uh, spreadsheet and shared it with me. And he somehow was able to find uh, the devotionals going all the way back to the year 2000, which I don't know how he did that, but he did. And he has all the links here. I need to update my own spreadsheet, but I just haven't gotten to it yet. So he records the same things. He didn't um, highlight joy to the world. I, I think that's significant, though, the joy to the world, because it's a second coming hymn. But going back, you, you don't see the Hallelujah Chorus anywhere going back to the year 2000. Furthermore... Uh, the one thing that, and I'll just use his, this was really, it stunned a lot of people. A lot of people, I think that didn't even like, don't really think about these things. When they saw the tabernacle choir in these white dresses, it was really stunning because they looked like angels. And it turns out that when you go um, all the years back, they always wear purple or pink or uh, kind of like a magenta color, blue, things like that. So for them all of a sudden to have white in 2023 is kind of stunning. Now, like I said, he was able to go back to the year 2000. So at the turn of the millennium, and that's that may be why they chose to do this, for the first three years, 2000, 2001, 2002, they also had white dresses, but it's been a long time. And uh, there was a lot of, there was like a lot of like an uptick in different things when it comes to the year 2000, like on my phrase tracker, I've looked up certain phrases and there have been upticks around the year 2000, probably because even though at the time they may not have known how soon the second coming would be. Um, I think that it was viewed as a significant event that on our calendar, we were moving into the new millennium on the, on the Gregorian calendar, even though the millennial reign hasn't started yet. So Anyway, so white dresses all of a sudden after all those years, and it's in the year 2023. That brings us back to this. Okay. So in other words, the Christmas devotional right before April 2024, you have this break in tradition. Why? Why now? Why do all these things line up five years, one year, the conference before, the, the Christmas devotional before? Why? Why does President Nelson want us to see uh, Christ coming to the Nephites and then he wants us to read about it just a couple years before? You can ignore it. You can, you can, you know, just not pay attention to it. You know, everyone sees signs in different ways. Um, and that's fine. I respect that. But there's, there's many of you that think the same way that I do. It's probably why you're watching this channel. And uh, it feels like just everything is pointing to April 2024. So that was the fourth one. And then the fifth one, I have to keep it on a separate spreadsheet. Otherwise, this will get too cluttered and it could mess up uh, just how it's laid out here. It's make it more diluted. So uh, we've been talking about this recently, <laughs> excuse me, how President Nelson, starting with the 200 year anniversary of the Angel Moroni uh, meeting with Joseph Smith, starting on that anniversary date. 
he started doing this thing on social media where he'll do a post each month, like one post a month that repeats something seven times. So the first one, okay, this was September 21st, 2023. And the thing that was repeated seven times was Book of Mormon. The next, the next one was an excerpt from his talk called Think Celestial, where he posted Think Celestial uh, seven times. He, it was in his talk, and then he posted that part of his talk. Okay, and so forth. Um, in November, it was Names of Jesus Christ, like Jesus Christ, Jehovah. In December, it was uh, Titles of Jesus Christ, like all in one paragraph, seven times. In January, it was the word Marvel that was said seven times. And then in February, it was the word Love that was repeated seven times. And I'm probably going to do another video about this, but someone pointed out that the word commandment, uh, now they, they miscounted it, it. Commandment is not in here seven times. It's actually in here eight times, but that is interesting. And so as you can see, I've been counting it up, counting them up. September was one, October two, November three, all the way till now. Uh, February would be the sixth time in a row. And now March, okay, the month before April, 2024, March will be the seventh if he does it again. And I think he will. And then if he does it again in April and it's eight, we've talked about the fact that eight is, um, it's the number of, it's the number of, um, starting a new cycle. So if like seven is completion, then when you start over, you're at eight. So, I believe that's the reason why eight is the is the age of accountability because I think there's symbolic aspects that tie into that. That uh, that's when you get baptized because you've you've gone through your first seven years of life, right? And now you're starting. It's like you're starting a new cycle. You're starting a new. It's a new beginning. Your rebirth, right? So uh, we've likened that to the millennium, and how uh, perhaps eight could represent the millennium. Both seven and eight would. I mean, seven because it's the seventh thousand years, but you can also use eight because that's the number of a new beginning, a new cycle, and a rebirth, whatever. So those are the five ways. And um, it's just, and, there, and then there's so much more. Again, I, I don't want to be, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but Let's just go back over here. Let's go to President Nelson. It's President Nelson. 2024 just happens to be President Nelson's seventh year as president of the church, his hundredth year of life. He's given 40 talks before the April 2024 General Conference uh, as president of the church. 111 talks as an apostle. Uh, that conference will be his 40-year anniversary as an apostle. Um, skip that. I'm not going to go into all these things. Five years. We just talked about that. Seven years since the 2017 eclipse and it's solar maximum. So you understand like a lot of it is pointing toward April, 2024. It's mind blowing. So, <clears throat> you know what, maybe what I'll do, maybe what, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to call an audible. I'm going to stop here and then in the next video, or maybe I'll, I'll wait a couple of videos and then I'll put out the rest of it, rest of this where, where we'll go into detail, because um, I think this is pretty good right here. Just visually looking at it, simplified. Hopefully this makes sense. If you want to come and look at this spreadsheet yourself, the link for my spreadsheets is in the description box of every video. And this is under the tab or the, the spreadsheet called Profits, President Nelson's Warnings. Okay. So I would be excited. And again, remember the red heifers, uh, if, if you didn't watch my last video and you should, I was able to confirm that Passover is the time that they're going to burn the red heifers. Imagine this, imagine this scenario. Imagine that the second coming happens before, um, <coughs> excuse me. Imagine that it happens before, uh, they burn the red heifer. Imagine that Christ came this month, next month don't don't start with the it can't happen if that's your opinion that's fine i have reasons to believe the way that i do you can go to my spreadsheet called common misconceptions about the second coming and go down to the topic of timing of the second coming and read that okay and just watch all the rest of my channel but imagine that christ comes before they burn the red heifer he comes he saves the jews um and then he's like you know that red heifer it actually symbolizes me 
and we're going to go ahead, we're going to burn it, right? And then the sons of Levi are going to do a, a an offering in righteousness. We've looked into that. Some people think that only refers to us, members of the church, and just how we have the Aaronic priesthood now, and we're doing the ordinances of the gospel. No, it's also referring to actual animal sacrifices, and we've read that before. So it'd be interesting if that would be that first uh, sacrifice, and he would personally oversee it. You know, wouldn't that be a really poignant experience for them? Christ comes, you know, he, and then he tells them, I've prepared these uh, red heifers, and we're going to do this, and you are my people. And you, under, you understand what I'm saying? So, but anyway, the fact is, they're planning on burning them uh, in April during Passover. So, so many things pointing to April. Okay, that's going to be it for this one. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. Like this video if you liked it. Leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also, make sure to share, and I'll talk to you guys later.